Hey babe, and anybody else watching, and welcome back to A Life Together. Today, 2 Chronicles 21, 22, 23, and 24. Yesterday, uh, three main players was uh, Micaiah, Ahab, and King Jehoshaphat. So we looked at also the defeat of Moab and Ammon. And today we're going to be taking a look at some of the Judean kings. So specifically, uh, Jehoram and Ahaziah. And then also uh, we'll be taking a look at King Joash, the repair of the temple, and then his wickedness. So really interesting Really interesting, but good start to his life. Really, really strong. And then things go south. Well, so we'll take a look at that again in 21 through 24 of Second Chronicles today. So, chapter 21. Then Jehoshaphat rested with his fathers and was buried with them in the city of David. And Jehoram, his son, succeeded him as king. Jehoram's brothers, the sons of Jehoshaphat, were Azariah, Jehiel, Zechariah, Azarihu, Michael, and Shephathiah. All these were sons of Jehoshaphat, king of Israel. Their father had given them many gifts of silver and gold and articles of value, as well as fortified cities in Judah. But he had given the kingdom to Jehoram because he was his firstborn son. When Jehoram established himself firmly over his father's kingdom, he put all his brothers to the sword, along with some of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, as the house of Ahab had done, for he married a daughter of Ahab. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, because of the covenant the Lord had made with David, the Lord was not willing to destroy the house of David. He had promised to maintain a lamp for him and his descendants forever. In the time of Jehoram, Edom rebelled against Judah and set up its own king. So Jehoram went there with his officers and his chariots. The Edomites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, but he rose up and broke through by night. To this day, Edom has been in rebellion against Judah. Libna revolted at the same time because Jehoram had forsaken the Lord, the God of his fathers. He had also built up high places on the hills of Judah and had caused the people of Jerusalem to prostitute themselves and had led Judah astray. Jehoram received a letter from Elijah the prophet, which said, This is what the Lord, the God of your father David, says. You have not walked in the ways of your father Jehoshaphat, or of Asa, king of Judah, but you have walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, and you have led Judah and the people of Jerusalem to prostitute themselves, just as the house of Ahab did. You have also murdered your own brothers, members of your father's house, men who were better than you. So now the Lord is about to strike your people, your sons, your wives, and everything that is yours with a heavy blow. You yourself will be very ill with a lingering disease of the bowels until the disease causes your bowels to come out. The Lord aroused Jehoram, the house of the, um, Jehoram, the uh, hostility of the Philistines and of the Arabs who lived near the Cushites. They attacked Judah, invaded it, and carried off all goods found in the king's palace together with the sons and wives. Not a son was left to him except Ahaziah, the youngest. After this, the Lord afflicted Jehoram with an incurable disease of the bowels in the course of time. And at the end of the second year, his bowels came out because of the disease, and he died in great pain. His people made no fire in his honor, as they had for his fathers. Jehoram was 32 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem eight years. He passed away to no one's regret, and was buried in the city of David, but not in the tombs of the kings. Chapter 22 the people of Jerusalem made Ahaziah Jehoram's youngest son king in his place, since the raiders who came from, uh, came with the Arabs into the camp had killed all the other sons. So Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, king of Israel, began to reign. Ahaziah was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem one year. His mother's name was Athaliah, a granddaughter of Omri. He, too, walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother encouraged him in doing wrong. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as the house of Ahab had done. For after his father's death, they became his advisors to his undoing. He also followed their counsel when he went with Joram, to Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, to war against Hazel, king of Aram at Ramoth-Gilead. The Armenians wounded Joram, so he returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds they had inflicted in him, on him at ramoth in his battle with Hazel, king of Aram. Then Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to Jezreel to see Joram, son of Ahab, because he had been wounded. Through Ahaziah's visit to Joram, God brought about Ahaziah's downfall. When Ahaziah arrived, he went out with Joram to meet Jehu, son of Nimshi, whom the Lord had anointed to destroy the house of Ahab. 
While Jehu was executing judgment on the house of Ahab, he found the princes of Judah and the sons of Ahaziah's relatives who had been attending Ahaziah, and he killed them. He then went in search for Ahaziah, and his men captured him while he was hiding in Samaria. He was brought to Jehu and put to death. They buried him, for they said he was a son of Jehoshaphat, who sought the Lord with all his heart. So there was no one in the house of Ahaziah powerful enough to retain the kingdom. When Athaliah, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she proceeded to destroy the whole royal family of the house of Judah. But Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jehoram, took Joash, son of Ahaziah, and stole him away from among the royal princes who were about to be murdered, and put him in his nurse, put him and his nurse in a bedroom, because Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jehoram, and wife of Prince Jehoiada, was, Athali was excuse me, was Ahaziah's sister. She hid the child from Athaliah so she could not kill him. He remained hidden with them at the temple of God for six years while Athaliah ruled the land. Chapter 23. In the seventh year, Jehoiada showed his strength. He made a covenant with the commanders of units of a hundred. Azariah, son of Jehoram, Ishmael, son of Jehohanan, Azariah, son of Obed, Masiah, son of Adiah, and Elishaphat, son of Zikri. They went throughout Judah and gathered the Levites and uh, the heads of Israelite families from all the towns. When they came to Jerusalem, the whole assembly made a covenant with the king at the temple of God. Jehoiada said to them, The king's son shall reign as the Lord promised concerning the descendants of David. Now, this is what you are to do. A third of you priests and Levites who are going on duty on the Sabbath are to keep watch at the doors. A third of you at the royal palace and a third of you at the fountain gate and all the other men <coughs> excuse me, are to be in the courtyards of the temple of the Lord. No one is to enter the temple of the Lord except the priests and Levites on duty. They may enter because they are consecrated. But all other men are to guard what the Lord has assigned to them. The Levites are to station themselves around the king, each man with his weapons in hand. Anyone who enters the temple must be put to death. Stay close to the king wherever he goes. The Levites and all the men of Judah did just as Jehoiada the priest had ordered. Each one took his men. Those who were going on duty in the Sabbath and those who were going off duty, for Jehoiada the priest had not released any of the divisions. Then he gave the commanders of the units of a hundred, the spears and the large and small shields that belonged to King David and that were in the temple of God. He stationed all the men, each with his weapon in his hand around the king, near the altar and the temple, from the south side to the north side of the temple. Jehoiada and his sons brought out the king's son, and they put a crown on him, and they presented him with the copy of the covenant and proclaimed him king. They anointed him and shouted, Long live the king! When Athaliah heard the noise of the people running and cheering the king, she went to them at the temple of the Lord. She looked, and there was the king, standing by his, pil standing by his pillar at the entrance. The officers and the trumpeteers were beside the king, and all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets, and the singers with musical instruments were leading the praises. Then Athaliah tore her robes and shouted, Treason! Treason! Jehoiada the priest sent out the commanders of units of a hundred who were in charge of the troops and said to them, Bring her out between the ranks and put to the sword anyone who follows her. For the priest had said, Do not put her to death at the temple of the Lord. So they seized her as she reached the entrance of the horse gate on the palace grounds, and there they put her to death. Jehoiada then made a covenant that he and the people and the king would be the Lord's people. And the people went to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They smashed the altars and the idols and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Then Jehoiada placed the oversight of the temple of the Lord in the hands of the priests, who were the Levites, to whom David had made assignments in the temple to present the burnt offerings of the Lord as written in the law of Moses, with rejoicing and singing as David had ordered. He also stationed doorkeepers at the gates of the Lord's temple, so that no one who was in any way unclean might enter. He took with him the commanders of hundreds, the nobles, the rulers of the people, and all the people of the land, and brought the king down from the temple of the Lord. They went into the palace through the upper gate and seated the king on the royal throne. And all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was quiet, because Athaliah had been slain with the sword. Chapter 24 Joash was seven years old when he became king. He reigned in Jerusalem 40 years. His mother's name was Zebiah. She was from Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the eyes of the Lord all the years of Jehoiada the priest. 
Jehoiada chose two wives for him, and he had sons and daughters. Sometime later, Joash decided to restore the temple of the Lord. He called together the priests and the Levites and said to them, Go to the towns of Judah and collect the money due annually from all Israel to repair the temple of your God. Do it now. But the Levites did not act at once. Therefore, the king summoned Jehoiada the chief priest and said to him, Why haven't you required the Levites to bring in from Judah in Jerusalem the tax imposed by Moses, the servant of the Lord, and by the assembly of Israel for the tent of the, of the testimony? Now, the sons of that wicked woman, Athaliah, had broken into the temple of God and had used even its sacred objects for the bales. At the king's command, a chest was made and placed outside at the gate of the temple of the Lord. A proclamation was then issued in Judah and Jerusalem that they should bring to the Lord the tax that Moses, the servant of God, had required of Israel in the desert. All the officials and all the people brought their contributions gladly, dropping them into the chest until it was full. Whenever the chest was brought in by the Levites to the king's officials and they saw that there was a large amount of money, the royal secretary and the officer of the chief priest would come and empty the chest and carry it back to its place. They did this regularly and collected a great amount of money. The king and Jehoiada gave it to the men who carried to the work and require, the work required for the temple of the Lord. They hired masons and carpenters to restore the Lord's temple, and also workers in irons and brawn to repair the temple. The men in charge of the work were diligent, and the repairs progressed under them. They rebuilt the temple of God according to its original design and reinforced it. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money to the king and Jehoiada. With it were made articles for the Lord's temple, articles for the service and for the burnt offerings, and also dishes and other objects of gold and silver. As long as Jehoiada lived, burnt offerings were presented continually in the temple of the Lord. Now, Jehoiada was old and full of years, and he died at the age of 130. He was buried with the kings in the city of David because of the good he had done in Israel for God and his temple. After the je death of Jehoiada, the officials of Judah came and paid homage to the king, and he listened to them. They abandoned the temple of the Lord, the God of their fathers, and worshipped Asherah poles and idols. Because of their guilt, God's anger came upon Judah and Jerusalem. Although, lo although the Lord sent prophets to the people to bring them back to him, and though they testified against them, they would not listen. Then the Spirit of God came upon Zechariah, son of Jehoiada the priest. He stood before the people and said, This is what God says. Why do you disobey the Lord's commands? You will not prosper because you have forsaken the Lord. He has forsaken you. But they plotted against him. And by order of the king, they stoned him to death in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. King Joash did not remember the kindness of Zechariah's father, Je Jehoiada, had shown him, but killed his son, who said, As he lay dying, May the Lord see this and call you to account. At the turn of the year, the army of Aram marched against Joash, invaded Judah and Jerusalem, and killed all the leaders of the people. They sent all the plunder to their king in Damascus. Although the Armenian army had come with only a few men, the Lord delivered into their hands a much larger army. Because Judah had forsaken the Lord, the God of their fathers, judgment was ex executed on Joash. When they... Uh, or when the Armenians withdrew, they left Joash severely wounded. His officials conspired against him for murdering the son of Jehoiada the priest, and they killed him in his bed. So he died and was buried in the city of David, but not in the tomb of the kings. Those who conspired against him were Zabad, son of Shimeath, an Ammonite woman, and Jehozabad, the son of Shimrath, a Moabite woman. The count of his sons, the many prophecies about him, and the record of the restoration of the temple of God are written in the annotations of the book of the kings, and Amaziah, his son, succeeded him as king. That is such a crazy turn. I mean, looking at that, we see, once again, I think, what is that, 2415. Now, Jehoiada was old and full of years, and he died at the age of 130. So, at 130, I mean, just before then, we have this incredible council, this, this, bulwark, uh, this representative of God, just an amazing man of faith who has done incredible things for God and for his temple and for his people. And yet we see Joash immediately turn and forget all of that. And that is so sad and frustrating and anger inducing. And yet it's something that, that I think I struggle with daily. I mean, I have good mentors and I have people that I, I really look up to 
and yet I fail consistently. And yeah, maybe it's not as in such a spectacular fashion as Joe Ash did in just the evil murder of his mentor and friend's son, but it's it's still that where it's, I gotta be careful about getting on my high horse and being too prideful because I have great men of the faith to look to and yet I still fail. And what's more is I have Jesus to look to, the perfect example. And I am completely without excuse. So I think it's important to come with an air of humility when we see this and also to remember who we're looking to because the second that that person is gone and we're looking to ourselves or we're looking to those that aren't looking to God, I think we, we completely get uprooted. It's worth praying about, so let's do it. God, we thank you for giving us a perfect picture to look at when we look at how we should be constructing our lives, Lord, and how we should be living those lives out. God, you have given us the perfect template in your son, Jesus. God, thank you so much for him. Lord, let us never take our eyes off of him. I thank you for those mentors that we have in our lives that, that show us what that can look like, what living that out practically day to day can look like, God. But when our, our heroes fail, Lord, help us to remember that we never we're looking at them, but that we look to you and to your son. God, we once again, thank you for those people. But again, help us to remember constantly that we are looking beyond them. Thank you so much for your son, Lord. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, that is about all I have for you today. As always, know I appreciate you. Wife, appreciate you tons. And I will plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.